Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning. It is the Earthmaster back here on this uh, Monday already, May 8th, 2023. It's about 8.22 a.m. here along the, uh, well, not the West Coast, but here in Texas still, Central Time. Um, it is, uh, yeah, definitely a, a Monday, it feels like it. Looking at the latest space weather activity here. I double check, make sure everything's working. Yep, uh, still out on the uh, a different computer here. All right, we did have a, um, supposed to have last night, a G3 class storm coming in, and that never uh, materialized. It looks like the, it looks like the highest we got here on the KP index was a 4.5, uh, which is very low. Uh, and very short of what we were expecting for the G3 storming conditions. So uh, that looks like it's come to pass and uh, um, yeah, kind of a, 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 a dud, so to speak. And a lot of times when we get these CMEs and whatnot, uh, it uh, is questionable if it's gonna directly hit us and it looks like this one missed us. Uh, but either way, it looks like possibly unsettled conditions here over the next couple nights for the auroras. Nothing big though, and that G3 storm has been uh, canceled. It looks like, as far as flare activity, it looks like we did have a uh, a long duration M flare and a subsequent CME, another one. Uh, let's see what we got here. I believe that was Earth directed. Uh, let's see, this was put out yesterday here in the afternoon time period. A uh, coronal mass ejection there. CME is now visible on the latest uh, graph here from the. Space weather folks, it does look like that was possibly Earth directed. Uh, it looks like uh, if that was the case, an, a, uh, an effect will be felt here on the 10th of May, so just in a couple days. We'll see how that uh, plays out. Either way, it was a 1.6 M1.6 solar flare with a subsequent CME at uh, 3296 and 3296 sunspot is this area right here and notice uh, I think this is from yesterday this imagery or last night um, was earth directed so when you get those full halo CMEs uh, that does tend to uh, obviously hit the earth and create some stormy conditions uh, the latest imagery here from this morning it looks like uh, still got a little potential for some further flaring also this regional sunspot group here looks um, somewhat promising as well but that is about it there's no further uh, massive sunspot regions on the eastern limb that I can see um, for now but that's you know it's all subject to change here in the days ahead we'll continue to watch that and uh, see how that plays out either way um, we'll wait for the update on potentially the May 10th time frame for some solar flaring auroras that is uh, looks like we're getting a little bit of a proton event right now at the northern latitudes uh, up uh, well north is probably coming off of a uh, let's see what we have let me check the real-time solar wind stream here real quick I don't think I have that um, marked here on this computer Okay, so here's a real-time solar wind stream from the Space Weather Prediction Center. BTBZ component. Looks like there's a little bit of a south tilt to it. Right here. Um, speed's up there a little bit as well, but I'm not for sure exactly what's causing that uh, proton event right now. Either way, it looks like some radio... Uh, issues, communications, and uh, navigation systems being affected up here into the polar region, the northern section, a little bit down in the south as well. But uh, with that tilt, that's allowing a little bit more of the uh, uh, charged particles to enter into the um, areas up north. Uh, looks like still 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 55, X flare at 15% chance. Uh, but I think that's still a little elevated. Uh, with the current solar sunspots. All right, let's see what we got going on for earthquake activity here as we zoom in to the state of California outside of Bakersfield, a 2.0 coming in near the uh, Grapevine area just uh, about an hour or so ago. Uh, the rest of Southern California look, looks a little spotty. There's not a whole lot going on across the uh, state of California currently. 
a look at the 2.5 map and above. 12.7 near Covalo early this morning at just after midnight, looks like, um, onto the uh, coast range. But aside from, aside from that, not a whole lot going on across the southern or the northern California areas. Pacific Northwest, a little spotty up there as well. Let's see what we got for the, um, the trimmer tonight. There we go. Uh, about 65 epicenters of trimmer, somewhat spread out here across the entire length of the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, but mostly centered, it looks like, here around the Oregon area. Either way, not a big number, just a slight little uptick. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, we got one earthquake listed here near the Hebgen Lake Estates, a point three. Let's see what we have across the map here for the latest data. Not a whole lot going on. Things look like they're, um, at least for now, relatively calm and stable across the North American continent, uh, at least here for the states. A bigger, broader view here of the imagery. You know, to be honest, it doesn't look like there's all that much activity last last 24 hours. Uh, no major quakes to report. Let's see what we've got here for the largest activity. Largest magnitude was a 5.9 down here in a uh, divergent boundary, Southeast Pacific Ocean. Uh, that one coming in just after one o'clock. That may shift a little bit of pressure over here um, with this type of setup. We'll have to watch that. We did have a uh, is at 5.0 yesterday into the Tonga Trench, 546 kilometers deep. Pretty deep earthquake there. Not a whole lot of subsequent shallower movement. Uh, glance here at the GeoNet servers across New Zealand shows a, it looks like an hour ago, 3.9 uh, just outside the Wellington area in between North and South Island area. A couple other smaller quakes there over the last few hours. A glance here at the all magnitudes, uh, looks like some smaller quakes as well. Uh, but not, again, not a whole lot popping off here across New Zealand. A quick glance here at the earthquake drums. There is the three pointer coming in. That's going to show up pretty nicely uh, as we get a little bit more position down here in between the North and South Island area, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like they had a couple, couple smaller quakes. Some last night uh, down there in South Island. It doesn't look like there's anything uh, spectacular going on there. Earthquake drums, Tapo Super Volcano, some of these other areas down here near uh, uh, near the Wellington area. It's going to show some uh, seismograph readings, and that's what's being picked up on these graphs. Uh, further west, still a little spotty out here across the Papua New Guinea area and Indonesia. Um, I'm sure there's some activity out there. Pull up the EMSC model. Get a little better glance here at some of these smaller quakes uh, across the area. Again, EMSC reporting uh, roughly about what the USGS is reporting here as well. A couple fours over here in the uh, Africa region, it looks like. One of them being reported here from the USGS. Uh, let's see, 4.4, the latest one. Let's see what the latest one here is. Uh, Ethiopia, 4.4 coming in, yep. All right, uh, I'm going to zoom in here to the Java Trench regions. Uh, this map right here kind of shows some of the smaller quakes, uh, twos and threes that the earthquake 3D globe normally shows. Some of the activity down into the New Zealand region. Uh, overall though, man, just very minimal activity as far as large-scale movement goes. The Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet as well. Uh, glance here at South America looks like 4.6 from last night into the Chile area with a little bit of movement here into the Ecuador area uh, last night as well. Caribbean Plate and the Middle America Trench somewhat minor activity. Uh, again that one's from yesterday 4.3. Not a whole lot going on here today folks. Kind of a little on the um, quiet side. Earthquake activity across the big island. Uh, Pahala area, just seen a 2.7 here about an hour or so. Or, uh, yeah, within the last, looks like the last 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, the big, or this volcano up here, Kilauea Volcano, uh, still swarming. Still getting uh, some earthquake activity there across the region. Um, 
I don't think there's been any major changes there. Let's pull up the hands notification system and uh, we'll take a glance at the statements here from the USGS. Looks like there's an informational statement that they just put out. That was um, just before midnight Hawaii time. 3.8 east northeast of Pahala. Uh, looks like a de depth of about 20 miles, 32 kilometers. Uh, and then it's just, it's kind of just that typical swarm area down here uh, that uh, see some earthquake activity for many years actually. Um, there's a little statement on here. Uh, they talk about uh, it's been an earthquake swarm occurring beneath the Pahala area since 2019, but this is, it's gone back since um, the 60s. Uh, these quakes may be related to deep transport of magma in the hot spot beneath the island of Hawaii, but pose no volcanic threat to residents. Not yet, right? Just some, just some magma moving below your feet out there. Uh, either way, it doesn't look like any major uh, adjustments going on currently across the uh, area. Uh, but, uh, you know, everything eventually will kick up, I believe. Uh, 3.8 Aleutian Islands area looks like uh, just about an hour or so ago. Generally light earthquake activity across the uh, region. Aside from that, folks, um, earthquake activity somewhat quiet. Let's see what we got here for the weather outlook here today. Uh, they did have a slight chance here uh, for some severe weather in central Texas where I'm at, but it uh, looks like they've removed that, so just a general a marginal risk of possibly some severe weather. Um, no tornado threat down in Texas. It looks like a 2% up north uh, wind event up north as well, as well as the, uh, the hail events all north with only minimal chances of severe weather here in Texas. So we're just going to see what uh, goes on today. Maybe just uh, tour around, look for some good food once again Let's see what we got here for tomorrow current day two looks like a more of a slight risk up here into Oklahoma and southern Kansas these areas definitely need the rain so we'll see how that plays out looks like two percent chance tomorrow for tornadoes and uh, some wind and hail events as well up there into Oklahoma Kansas and a portion of Texas once again all right guys have a good one I'm going to jump off here and uh, see what uh, this day brings about. Again, out here in Texas for a little while, um, observing some weather. We had some uh, uh, interesting weather yesterday with some large hail. I think we picked up uh, probably golf ball size hail uh, just outside of Ro I think it was Rowena, Texas area. Some high winds as well. Uh, if we do come across anything, we'll pop up on the live stream. Uh, mobile live stream and share with you guys uh, Probably get in tonight though and do another update. I was so tired last night. didn't get a chance to do a, a um, Earthquake update plus it was pretty quiet I looked at the map last night and I was like oh man it can wait till it can wait till the morning and uh, Even then overnight it looks like it's still fairly quiet, but I uh, wanted to give you guys a heads up what's going on and uh, Yeah, so I hope everyone enjoys their Monday. I know it's not the best day but hey, going to make the best of it. Have a good one. We will catch you guys back here uh, later tonight or uh, out there on the mobile live stream. So have a good one. And of course, Missy Mimi's. How's it going, guys? <laughs> so see you later. See you later. <laughs> we'll, we'll chat you guys a little bit later tonight. Have a good one.